Onboard cameras have come a long way, but now everyone wants silky smooth footage. Here are a few ways to achieve that. Before we get too technical and talk about things like gimbals and stabilization software, let's talk about the easiest way to get smooth footage. And that is where you mount the camera. Starting off with the bumpiest place is actually anywhere on your bike. It's gonna be really rough. Even with suspension, you're still gonna find it's too jittery, too shaky. Although you can get some cool angles of things like suspension working on the bike. To the next smoothest option, which is mounting it on a chest mount. So this does give you some cool angles. You can see the bars, see your hands moving around. I think that can look really cool. A uh, tip for this is to mount the camera upside down and you'd be surprised at sort of how much it almost needs to point your face because your back is going to be almost flat when you're riding. To the smoothest place, which is on your head. So you've got your arms and legs doing that suspension as well as maybe your bike. It really does smooth things out. Also looking round corners, does make it look cool. The disadvantage is it maybe doesn't look as fast and also you can't see you move around on the bike. So if you're doing a wicked flat tabletop and jump, you're probably not gonna be able to see it. Now moving on to some technology, and this way you have to spend a bit of money because this is a gimbal. So you can pick these up for a couple hundred pounds, a couple hundred dollars. Basically it's got three motors. It's a three axis gimbal. You slide your camera in there. I've got a GoPro. Turn the thing on and this will really smooth out your footage. I used one of these for the Andy Pacifico. I raced a few years, well, two years ago. And you can see the footage on that is super smooth. So this really does hold your camera super central, takes out all the bumps and makes the footage look super cinematic. Yeah. Best way to use a gimbal is to mount it to a chesty and it really does make things look cool. See your hands moving around. Limitations of this are obviously you have to buy the thing. It's another thing to charge, the cost of it. Um, but really, it does get in the way a little bit. You will eventually slam your bars into the camera and you can damage these things. They're not the sturdiest. Obviously, they're fairly lightweight, so you can damage them. Uh, Disadvantage is eventually they will bottom out. So they're not completely 360. You will hit its limitations and you'll see that on the camera. Uh, tips for this is to mount your chesty as tight as you can get it, but also as high as you can get it, I find. Right underneath your chin, it'll work really well. Next to in-camera stabilization, that is supposed to get rid of the need for a gimbal, especially something like this GoPro 7, brand new, they have this. So think about a big box like that, and that is what it's filming, but what it's outputting is a much smaller box, and that smaller box floats around inside the big box, and that does the work of stabilizing it. The limitations of this, well, this is brand new technology, so you've got to buy the latest and greatest camera to get this software. Also, that little box can still bottom out inside the big box, so you can still get those jolts. But of course, now you don't need to run that big piece of gimbal equipment on your chest, just a nice little camera. You can see in this video how the stabilization works. The mud on the lens is not moving, the software is moving the frame around to smooth out the footage. And the other one is the quality of the video you get from it, because if it shoots in 4K and it has to crop that to get a stabilised image, it's going to be smaller. Next, something a bit different, and this is the 360 camera. It's the same sort of idea, but now you're filming a great big bubble, complete 360 vision, and now you're cropping a square out of that 360 bubble. So the advantages of this is, of course, you won't miss anything. It films in 360, so you can then just frame what you want afterwards. So super easy to do. Disadvantages, well, you may see a bit of stitching where it's stitching that front and the rear camera together. Also, you need to stick it on top of something. So if you've got that on your chest, the 360, half of it's gonna see your chest. But you'll still be able to get a smooth POV video facing forward. However, quality is sacrificed a bit with the 360 camera, so you're now cropping a lot from the 360 bubble. But because it's completely 360, this will never bottom out. But what about sticking a brand new GoPro 7 inside a gimbal? Well, that is going to be super smooth, but how smooth do you want it? You might find it makes everything look too easy, slower than it actually is, and just takes away that raw actual riding feel of your POV footage. So experiment, try what you like, and try and find the best thing that makes your riding look as good as possible. Right, I'm all set up, off to get some sick POV. If you want to see some of our good POV videos, click on the bottom screen, give us thumbs up, hit that sub button.